You are walking by clothing store and from the corner of your eye you see a shirt that you think would look great on you. A few minutes later you find yourself walking out of that store with that shirt. We all know that it's much easier to spend money than it is to make it and while buying new things from time to time is okay. We can find ourselves in financial trouble pretty quick if our spending gets out of hand. Therefore, in this video, I will share with you 10 reasons you can't stop spending money. Hello and welcome back to OnlyPay. We'll be discussing about the reasons why you can't stop spending money. Be sure to watch all the way to the end. If you are new to the channel, then hit the subscribe button below from our life-changing content. Believe it or not, Millions of Americans live beyond their means between the rise in social media and their ever increasing number of new gadgets to buy resisting or temptation to spend can be nearly impossible. Unfortunately, not being able to control this temptation can have uh, dire financial consequences. In fact, a recent survey found out that one third of the people aged 30 to 49 had more credit and debit card than savings. Imagine being able, middle-aged and having absolute nothing in your bank account to show off your years of work. I think the question must of uh, most of us need to ask ourselves is what drives us this dispense. So much behavioral economists have been studying the nature of spending for years and have identified that 10 main reasons people overspend, which I will now outline reason. Number 1. Best alternative spending in a world of scarcity, choosing one thing means giving up something else. When we spend money on one thing, it's money we can't spend on something else now or later for instance. If you choose uh, to attend a four-year college program, then you are giving up the seller. You could be making off it instead work full-time for these four years or if you only have thousand dollars to buy a new TV. Then the opportunity cost is spending that same money to buy new computer therefore there is an opportunity cost to everything we do and that cost is expressed in terms of next best alternative. For example, the true benefit of buying a new car can be assessed in terms of other equally significant things we could have done. With that money, unfortunately when the next best alternative option is considered, people tend to lack the ability to abstain from choosing between their either of the two options and instead decide to buy both. So in the example I just provided that same person not only buy the TV with thousand dollars we had to but Dan would charge a new computer to their credit card causing themselves to overspend to satisfy the temptation to have both devices as this behavior becomes more routine. The overspending only gets worse making your chances of building wealth slim to none reason. Number 2. Tacked money. Have you ever gifted money for clothes or to put towards new phone and while you are droning it that you still use that money for in intent purpose? You see most of us perform mental accounting by dividing our money into separate mental accounts such as food, clothes, rent, school, supplies and play money and when, when done rights we spend based on the dollar values we attribute to these categories. In short, we only consider the opportunity cost within a specific amount without looking at the bigger picture of example you may have line of credit with 5000 US dollars outstanding that you should put your gift money towards but because it was gifted with the intention of being used to buy a new car phone or outfit you have mentally tagged that money into a respective account and will choose to not use for it more beneficial purpose instead you should be looking at your finances using a holistic perspective when you have a cash inflow Assess where the money will be best to put use rather than allocating it usually mental accounting reason. Number 3. Special occasions. Have you ever been to diet and decided that just for one night you would break your diet to celebrate a special occasion? It could be your birthday, a holiday or just a random Friday night and well, it feels good to indulge from time to time. 
Unfortunately, those calories still count well the same phenomenon that takes place when it comes to spending. We tend to overspend on special occasion birthdays or Christmas because we don't keep track of just how many of them we have. Consequently, we end up spending over normal budget failure. To incorporate an expect exponential purchase into a budget as one of a series of special purchases can encourage overspending. Luckily, you can budget for infrequent expenses by creating special savings account. Earmarks specifically says for holidays and birthdays so that you don't hinder your saving progress by enjoying yourself from time to time. Number 4. The present bias. Present bias occurs when individual place extra weight on more immediate reward than those in the future. For example, myself may want to buy a home, but my present self want to struggle on a tropical vacation well it often seems illogical to giving up a potential for a large future reward in exchange for monetary pleasure the reality is that f further into the future the roar it is the harder it is to keep its value in mind fa in fact this is the reason most people fail to put away money required to fund their retirements while most people could be millionaires in the retirement years by investing consistently from an early age. They instead succumb to spending on $8 coffee in a newest iPhone. In a sense, the more we disregard long-term interest in favor of immediate gratification, the more likely we'll be having an overspending problem which so I often preach reading down your short, medium and long term financial goals and reviewing them daily so that you can keep those long term rewards in the forefront of, the, of your mind. Number 5. The ease of credit card spending in addition to the present bias, it makes this overvalue or current spending worth future reward. The use of credit cards to pay all also increases the potential of overspending you've been probably experienced in yourself that it's much easier to swipe your credit card to pay for something than it is to open your wallet and open pull out the cash and this phenomenon has been researched extensively in fact a 2001 study found that shoppers who rely on credit cards as their form of payment compared to those who on only pay with cash spend 100% more hence making overspending that much easier and this makes sense when you pay with cash you literally see your funds diminish, diminishing whereas paying with credit doesn't cause the same emotion to resonate so if you want to spend less take out the cash you want to spend very single month and once the amount is gone you must wait until the following month to make any of the desired purchase Number 6. Through that the hell effect you are halfway through the month and without realizing it you have burned through the entity of your budget spending. So you decide to continue spending and say to yourself that you will do better next month. We all done it and behavior un unofficially called the what the hell effect. But what the hell effect the desk that fallen off and wrong causes a feeling of failure which leads to more indulgence for example let's say you got go a fancy restaurant for dinner you know the meal will be pricey and you get there and you see the menu you know for sure it will be an expensive evening for ordering your meal you decide to order more as you have already identified that this is outing will blow your environment budget for the month pudding the what the hell effect into action is reality. This effect is quite irritational as stopping once you hit your limit as much as more financially beneficial than continuing to spend. So if you find yourself saying oh what the hell let it be cue that you need to close your wallet and cut your losses. Number 7. Lack of willpower. Willpower refers to effortful control that exert with the purpose of controlling or Im impulsive behavior. I like to look at willpower as a resource that we deplete over the course of every single day. 
You start each day with full tank of willpower and it as it depleted you become more inclined to act in impulse and are more likely to be swayed by desired urges and cravings. Although you may regret them, the long run that this insist suggested that shoppers who are tired to distracted will likely increase their impulsive purchase. This is why you need to ask yourself how much willpower you have available in making financial decisions. If you are well rested and relaxed, you will be in much better situation to make good spending decisions. Then if you had just finished a full days of work and are stressed out by all the work you force yourself having to do following day, well, your willpower be a tool and not your kryptonite. Number 8. Retail Therapy Some people really stressed by working out, others talk out their feeling with their friends and sadly some people resort to compulsive spending to overcome their emotions. Well, detrimental to your bank balance and dopamine spikes, the spending offers has been proven time to time again to provide an immediate improvement to a shopper's mood. You have shopping at all this, those people that visualize themselves in a better life where they are dressed in nice clothes are surrounded by niche things buying makes these visualizations a reality there is no doubt that this form of therapy works which slices so many people partake in this behavior in fact a 2016 survey found that 96% of adults and 95% of teens participate in retail therapy making spending a mode enhancing tool used just about everyone. Number 9. Shopping addiction beyond periodic retail therapy lies the potential developing a real shopping addiction. A shopping addiction is categorized by impulse control disorder and about 6% of population could be considered compulsive buyers. Now a person cannot be classified as either a compulsive buyer or not a disorder exists. Exists along a continuum in reality they are excessive shoppers and then there are compulsive shoppers they buy things they do not need and often cannot afford a place their work their families and their mental health is jeopardized some of these people who end up in the bankruptcy of being buyers suffering from disease similar to alcoholism the most effective first step to for treatment is to identify why and how you are shopping in initially become a problem Experts suggest starting a journal to keep track of your triggers which is the first step in tackling overspending issues. Number 10. Self-testification The mind is powerful tool and it can convince us of just about anything one of which is the what we deserve to spend money justifying our choices to not only ourselves but the others around us is part of human being. Making sense is a deep human motivation but making sense is not the same thing as being correct for example the person who bought a luxury at him but feels guilty about it may try to uh, elevate his guilt by coming up with an additional reason to justify his choice such as it it was on sale i just had to buy it but, but this doesn't mean that justifying the purchase themselves that it made them the cost any else this is why you need to create a list of what you want and need items when considered your purchase. By writing out items you intend to purchasing, you can mentally deliberate on the level of necessity so that you don't self just fight furious purchase and frequently which will save you a ton of money over time. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to hit likes and subscribe. Be sure to turn on the bell notification so you don't miss any video just like this one. If you enjoy this video, please give us your thoughts in the comment below and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.